What's going on, everybody? My name is Ben, and welcome back to another episode of Ben Bills with Joe. We are back with the Tamiya 140A scale ME109, and today I want to finish off the cockpit, weather it all up, and then glue it into the fuselage. So let's go ahead and dive right on in. Now, last time we overcoated all the parts and pieces with an RLM02 by Vallejo. I then took a little bit of white and mixed it together and hit a lightning coat here to kind of fade everything out to help with my weathering. Did that on both sides, as well as the cockpit tub itself, and I think honestly, it's going to help me out immensely. Now, of course, I added in some red dots here and there for levers, and I also included some details on the control panel around the front flight instrument panel, and I think that looks pretty decent. I also added in those belts around the rudder pedals, and I think it looks okay. It's not perfect, but again, you're not really going to see much of it, so I'm happy. Everything has been gloss coated with a nice gloss coat of future, and so we're going to move on to weathering. Now, for the weathering itself, I wanted to try some products I've never used before. First and foremost, I'm going to try this Tamiya Paneline Accent Color. Then I also have this Weather Effects by MIG. This is North African Dust. It's a wash. I want to go ahead and try that around the floorboards and around the rudder pedal to see if that does kind of leave a dusty effect. So that should be a lot of fun as well. So let's go ahead and queue up a time lapse. We're going to go ahead and jump into this. We're going to get everything all weathered up, use some powders, use our washes, use our Paneline Accent, then overcoat it all with a nice flat coat, and we'll see where we go from there.
And we are back, everybody, and I have to say that all those weathering materials were really fun to use. The Paneline Accent Color by Tamiya, super awesome. I love it. It's really, really helpful for sure. I also used some AIM weathering powder as well as some of my North African Dust Wash by MIG. I think everything kind of comes together and it looks pretty decent. Now on the other side as well, we did the same thing, a little bit of Paneline Accent Wash. We did some of the Desert Wash and some of our AIM weathering powder. Everything looks pretty decent. I like how it's made all the details pretty much pop right off the sidewall there. We overcoated everything with that nice flat coat of Windsor Newton matte varnish and it's right there where I want it to look. For the cockpit tub itself, we did the same process. And everything has been nicely overcoated with that matte varnish. So it's brought down that sheen. Of course, that meant that all of the gauges were matte as well. So I went back and I quickly took toothpick and some future and I just dotted each of the centers of all of those different dials. You really can't tell that I did that, but I did. And that helps a little bit in certain light. You can kind of get the glint of what would have been the clear covering for all of those dials. So not bad, not bad at all. But of course, we're not quite done yet because we need to go ahead and complete the look by adding some seat belts. I think that's really going to tie the whole cockpit together. And even though they're not going to be 100% accurate, I think that would do a lot to go ahead and add a bit more realism to this really awesome kit. I got to tell you, I love that panel line wash. So let me reiterate, it just dropped into all those places. It made everything pop. It's just fantastic. I'm really happy. I'll be using that for sure with all of my other builds. Oh, well, at least as much as I can anyway. So let's go ahead and move over to our seat belts and see how we're going to be making those. Now to make our seat belts, we're going to be using Tamiya 6mm tape. We're going to use some solder and we're going to use some wire. I'm going to take some measurements off of the decal that was given to us by Tamiya. Take some measurements, look to be about a millimeter for all the belts. That's great. We're going to move forward and we're going to take this piece of tape and we're going to cut it into six one millimeter strips. That's going to help us out creating our belts and then we'll just go from there. I'm not going to make it as accurate, I'm sure, but you know what? It's going to look the part, and that's all I'm interested in. Now, when cutting the strips of tape, I'm going to make them around one millimeter in width. That's not going to mean they're going to be perfect, but I'm just going to make approximately about six different strips here of the tape, and then we're going to be able to come back and be able to pull those up. I'm also going to cut some a little bit shorter than others. They're going to be different lengths, but they're still all going to be about one millimeter in width. So I'm going to finish off this, and then we're going to get over to our buckles and to our clasps. Now, once we have our strips all cut out, what we're going to do is we're going to take the longer strip and then take a shorter strip and we're going to sandwich those two together with adhesive sides facing each other. So basically, we're going to have one little section on both sides of the tape that's going to actually have that adhesive side exposed. The rest of it's going to be covered up and we're not going to have any of that sticky part. This is going to help us in the long run for sure when we start actually putting them together and weeding them through the actual belt buckle. Now I'm going to try to line them up as much as I can because I don't want anything kind of overhanging. Though I guess you could though leave a little bit of the bottom belt showing. That might give it the impression of having multiple layers of belts. But for right now, we're just going to go ahead and get those as evened out as possible. With again, just a little bit of that sticky part on either end of this tape strip right here. Once that's all situated, you can then pull out your wire and you can start creating the buckles and the clasps. That's gonna be probably one of the more tedious parts of this entire project. Now for the buckles themselves, we'll be using two different types of wire, one of which is a 0.3 millimeter solder and the other one is a 0.3 millimeter wire. So the wire is a lot stiffer, a lot firmer. The solder of course is super flexible and that will do really well for the actual clasps. But for these belts and these adjustment strips here, we're gonna be using wire. Now I've made my D profile with my end of my tweezers and now we're going to go ahead and smash them down. We're going to go ahead and form it into basically a square. It doesn't have to be perfect like I said, but it's going to be as close as I can get to a square shape. We're going to tamp it down, make sure it's nice and flat, and then we can go ahead and start trimming off any parts and pieces that are kind of overhanging. Because again, I want it to be more or less a square shape. And the less we have overhanging, the less likely it is to catch on things and to slow us down when we're trying to feed that belt through that loop. Now, once that's all set up, let's go ahead and grab one end of that belt. We're going to slide it through that buckle. Then we're going to loop the other end around and slide that through the buckle as well, leaving a little bit of a loop at the end so that we can then make our belt. This is a little bit more tedious, I know, but I think it looks pretty decent. It's not 100% perfect, but I think it's going to be good enough. And again, if you're just looking at it at arm's distance, it's going to look fine. Just to have something in there, I think is enough, but this adds a little bit more interest to it, and I think we'll be okay with it. Now, once we have that loop at the very top there, let's go ahead and just slide that buckle all the way to the top, put that piece of wire through, and then we'll be able to go ahead and cinch it down a little bit to make sure it's not going to go anywhere. So let's go ahead and take our tweezers. We're going to peel back one end of that, and we're going to kind of give it a little bit of tension, pull it there so it stays nice and firm. I'm going to go ahead and use a flush cuts to cut off each end of this wire. 
But before we do that, I want to use a little bit of super glue. And that super glue is going to go ahead and just solidify everything in here because we do have a couple of moving parts and pieces. We want to go ahead and lock all this together. And that super glue is going to do a really good job of just keeping everything cinched tight. Once this is dry, we're going to take our flush cuts and just snip off each of those ends of wires. We'll have ourselves a little clasp. I'm also going to take a little bit of the super glue and I'm going to put that on the back of the clasp itself. That's going to go ahead and just add a little bit more strength so that it won't slip all over the place. Let's go ahead and test fit it there into the back of the seat, and it does fit very nicely in that hole that I drilled out. It's a little bit long, though, so let's go ahead and just cut that down, and then we'll insert it there and glue it down. All right, we have our side in there. Let's go ahead and just see if a little bit of glue tacked into the back of that, and then we'll be able to then just tack it in with a little bit of super glue and glue it down to the back of the seat. So it's something a little bit like that. It's not perfect, but honestly, I think it's going to be a really nice addition. You have to make one more of the shoulder belts and then two lap belts using the exact same method. So let's get on that and we're just going to finish them all up and I'll show you what we come up with. And our finished product looks something like this. We've got all of our belts in there. I've kind of uh, made them a little bit more haphazard as if they're kind of just draped in there. The buckles are a little big, but to be honest, they'll work just fine. Now, of course, the colors are a little bit bright, so I want to go ahead and bring those colors down. And to do that, I'm going to be using some washes. Now, I don't know how many of you might remember, but a couple series ago when I was working on my Falk Wolf, I did paint up some figures and I made that little diorama of the airbase. What we're going to do here is I'm using the exact same wash that I used on that. We're using the Army Painter washes, and this is the strong type. And all I'm doing is just kind of soaking it around the belts and on top of the belts to bring that bright to me a tape color down, blend them in, make it look a little bit more used. One of the nice things about the Army Painter washes is they're not going to paint over the bright silver buckles. It's just going to kind of tarnish them down a little bit. So we'll still have the silver on the buckles and the silver on the clasps. Now the color may not be exactly 100% correct, but I'm good with it. Let's move on. Now I can also take some of the panel liner that we have by Tamiya and I can just dip that right underneath all of the belts to kind of make those pop off that chair a little bit more. Now I don't want to go ahead and overcoat the entire belt. I just want to kind of drip it in right between the belt and the seat. So this is going to be awesome. Let's go ahead and finish this off and then we'll see how we end up. And as you can see, our cockpit is finished. We have our seat belts all nicely installed and I like them. They're not 100% perfect though. I think the clasps there on the shoulder adjustments are a little bit too big, but that's as good as I can get. So I'm happy with it. And then overcoating everything with that strong type wash and then coming back in with a little bit of that panel liner made everything kind of pop and I love it. So let's go ahead and now glue this into the fuselage and then we'll go ahead and call it quits for the episode. And here it is. We've installed the cockpit inside the fuselage. It looks pretty cool. I like it. Like I said, it's not perfect, but I think it's going to be passable and we can go ahead and next episode move on with cleaning up some of these panel lines and getting the wings built up and just moving on from there. But anyway, guys, we're going to go ahead and just call it quits for today. Really appreciate you guys stopping on by. Next time, we're going to hit that wing section and see what we can do on that. But until our next episode, go out there, get yourself some bench time, have some fun, build something cool, and we'll see you back here on the next episode of Ben Builds with Joe. Till then, everybody, take care, and we'll see you soon.